Hello. Hi. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, everybody's coming in now. Hello, I'm Charlie Capen, uh, resident uh, ghost wrangler and phantasm finder for Momentus. Nice to have you with us today. We are in for a haunted good time today uh, for spooky season. And uh, we're with uh, a guy who is one of the nicest guys I've met in a long time and also uh, an expert in this field. So we are very uh, honored to have him here today. Uh, with us as always, Berto. Hello, Berto. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, uh, just a few orders of housekeeping before we get started here. Um, if you uh, would like to come into the front row or uh, ask a question uh, over, the, if you have a camera and mic that function, uh, please raise your hand. There's a little raised hand button uh, in the reactions button. Uh, we will pick uh, people at random. Uh, also, we have a Q&A box here, so you can send in your questions as we go along. Steve will be sharing stories and maybe some tips and uh, lots of fun stuff. Uh, the chat is also now open. You can uh, write to us or you can write to everybody. Just make sure you have uh, everything kind of lined up with that. Um, let's just make sure everybody's able to type. Um, we are so, we're, I'm not going to spend too much time, but I also wanted to say a couple other things real quick. Um, there's a lot of spooky stuff going on here. This is Spectropia, actually. Um, and this is, uh, well, this is something you can get on shopstands.com. We, we have some surprises for you today. So stick around to the end. Steve has some very fun, special stuff for the end for you guys. Hello, Renee. Hello, Melissa. There's Steve. Let's get Steve in here. Um, and yeah, feel free to use the chat box and also the Q&A. If you have questions, Steve's going to share his, his wisdom, his experiences. So feel free to make this. This is not a formal setting. This is uh, a fun setting. We are here to have fun. So hello, Steve. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hello. Yes. Good to see you. Thank you. Um, hey, gang. When uh, we first uh, started chatting, uh, Charlie and I and the gang, uh, we had uh, talked about uh, the fact that a book uh, is coming out. So we thought it'd be fun uh, to share a story uh, or to some uh, maybe extra information that isn't quite uh, shared in uh, the book. And and I also have some items here from uh, my own collection of, of things that I have and, and have collected over the years. So uh, first... This is the book that's coming or is out. Uh, but there's a, a story in here uh, from a place called Buckstep Manor. <clears throat> and uh, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, there are some pictures in there of Buckstep Manor. And it actually says here, no trespassing. Um, but if you've uh, seen the book, I actually... Uh, Maybe I shouldn't say this, but I did go on uh, uh, up there myself to take these pictures because, sadly, it is closed down. Sweetheart, it's Fleur. Um, it is closed down, but uh, a little backstory to this place. Uh, the executive chef and the um, staff uh, were having a hard time working there. Things were moving doors were being uh, slammed on them uh, objects were moving around and, and they couldn't explain it and uh, they had some staff members quit and we went there and we went there with a real intent uh, to really help them because they were getting ready to close their business because uh, the kitchen kept the business alive through the rest of the year when they didn't have a bunch of uh, traffic because of, uh, you know, the beautiful weather and what the Berkshires has to offer. And so we went there and unfortunately, we didn't experience anything or really get any evidence at all. Uh, and we felt pretty terrible about that. But the production had another uh, investigation set up just a few days later. But as a team, Jason, me or everyone else, uh, we knew that we just needed a little more time, but they were like, okay, but this is on your own, you know. Uh, and everybody couldn't make it on the day that we had. So Tango and I decided to just go ourselves. 
And Jay was like, awesome. That's really nice of you. This is super cool. Uh, see what you guys can get. Uh, and he had an interesting idea. Just let the stuff roll. Don't contaminate. Just stay. So the owner comes, unlocks it for us, gives us the keys, and says, please, just make sure the back door is locked, this and that. Lights off. Of course. So, the end of the night, nothing really happened. And this is a, a true part here that uh, quite uh, gets me. Fleur is adorable. Thank you. I see that. She'll probably make her uh, uh, self uh, known again. She's quite beautiful. And I just got back from a trip. And she uh, is quite needy right now. So, she might be meowing in the background. I apologize. So, uh, now... Uh, we are back, and Tango and I decide it's, it's probably four in the morning at this point. Okay, uh, we are now going to go back uh, and, and uh, upstairs and, and uh, pull everything down. And nothing really happened that we know of, but we were just trying to get evidence in these rooms, and we were going to review the stuff after. Uh, we were staying in the lobby out of the way, not paying attention to, you know, uh, what's happening there because we didn't want to contaminate it so this part here quite honestly I, I don't know how to explain it but it's the truth uh, Tango and I decided to um, close the, the lights off in the lobby and, and we knew that we had to go and shut the light off and, and lock the back door uh, as well and all of a sudden we started hearing these uh, voices and um, they were coming out of the thin air, obviously, not from speakers, not any. We were, it sounded so organic coming right in front of our, our faces. And we started moving closer to them and they were getting louder. And at this point, we were like, what is happening? Uh, we started hearing uh, footsteps shuffling. Uh, we started uh, hearing chatter, uh, loud chatter to the point that uh, when we were making our way through. Uh, the ballroom, uh, we had to talk loud to hear ourselves. What are we doing? Should we get out of here? Like, it was pretty intense, to be honest with you. And um, I uh, then said, yes, we have to go and unlock the, the door, uh, excuse me, lock the door and turn the light off. And uh, so... We we're making our way through the kitchen now, and pots are clanging and shaking, and ladles are falling. We don't know how to explain it. We're looking at each other, and I actually grabbed him, and he looked back at back at me and screamed, "Just to keep going!" And and we did uh, turn that off, turn this on, or whatever we did, and then ran back through there. Made our way back through the ballroom, through all those voices that were still there. And uh, then we stood there in the lobby looking at each other and it all just stopped. And uh, that was a crazy experience. Uh, it, I go into great detail here. Uh, and I, <laughs> I did take pictures myself. I was, uh, I heard it was condemned, but I was like, ah. But I went, snuck around took some photos and uh luckily I, I i got some but it was really cool to see it it was sad to see it you know boarded up uh there's hopes they're going to open it back up but tang and i still have to sort of check each other with that you know uh, did that really happen that crazy right oh man yeah it, it was really 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 awesome uh and in the book uh the name of the chapter, if you ever just want to poop, uh, is called Sometimes It's When You Least Expect It. Because in this instance, uh, it really was. It was when we least expected it. And uh, yeah, that was really cool. Now, I do have uh, a few things here that I would like to share. Okay. Now there's a place that 
we oh pennsylvania yeah uh i i grew up there uh right outside of monroeville uh which are anybody uh who has a uh of you know a liking for horror movies and now that that's the mall that they filmed dawn of the dead in and uh, when i was a kid that was the mall that I, I would go to i'd walk around there and and then when i got a little older and watched you know the movie and became a fan i was like Whoa, i recognized everything uh but in any case yeah uh, so i'm from pennsylvania also but i grew up here massachusetts where i live now uh, okay hi from germany gosh hi germany okay we got a, a call once to investigate a place called uh, the stone lion in and uh, it's in oklahoma and this place was really quite special um it was beautiful uh, sadly uh, the lawn was taken by a fire and they said uh, be careful you know if anybody's a smoker you can't you, nothing uh not not many of us are uh on our crew but and they were that scared that things would just go go up in, in flames. It was really dry at the time. Quite scary. I remember the whole town. There were signs everywhere. But in any case, uh, we investigated. And uh, they were seeing apparitions. And when we say apparitions, it just means that there's no identity. It would be the uh, ghost of Abraham Lincoln, uh, not the uh, apparition of Abraham Lincoln. Apparition, there's a bit of mystery there. You don't know who it is. Semantics. Uh, but uh, that's just the uh, deciding factor there. But uh, So since they didn't know quite who it was, uh, apparitions coming down uh, the staircase, moving through uh, the main hall on the first floor. And uh, they were also, this woman uh, at the time owned it. Uh, her name escapes me. Um, she was really, really, really nice. Uh, for those of you who may have seen that episode, uh, she was the one who gave us uh, the tour. And uh, she said that the house is yours for the whole week and, and gave us the keys. She said, I won't be back. Uh, so we actually stayed in, in that mansion that whole a week and investigated of course on the show it may look like it's a, a brief bit of time but it really is uh quite uh, a while that we are there and we did have some of those same experiences uh, they would say that this door would open and close and they would see the handle turn uh, they would say that they would hear people walking up and down uh, the stairs and um, when we were there we heard a lot of those same sounds and had a lot of those same experiences uh, and actually uh, saw a door handle jiggle a bit move a bit I didn't know what it was who knows you know realistically it could have been anything but uh, there were a lot of things happening there that you know, it could make me think it was paranormal. And it was the door that they did claim would open and close. And um, they were renovating the place. So the place had been renovated and uh, after the fact. And then um, uh, they gave me this from one of the doors, or I acquired this from one of the doors. Uh, that door, uh, and this is that exact handle, uh, Apparently they didn't want it anymore because, uh, I, you know, I do think they believe that it's attached to this uh, and not necessarily uh, the door itself or the structure. I don't know why. Maybe you know, perhaps it is the residual energy of something always turning that. But I've had this here now for six, seven years, maybe uh, eight years. Nine, I don't know. And nothing's ever happened. 
uh, in regards to this, not in my house. And quite honestly, uh, I would rather visit it than live in it. People who live in a, a, a really haunted house have a, a real hard time maintaining friendships uh, and relationships and even a career or a job. Uh, their life um, really does change. Uh, a, a quite a, a good example of that is the, the movie Ghost, uh, excuse me, uh, Poltergeist, right? Uh, in the beginning of the movie, uh, the guy's having a, a, a blast. You know, he's watching the, the game with his friends or, or whatever they're on the TV. And, um, you know, he's selling real estate and he's having a, a, you know, everything's great. Family's happy. All of a sudden, by the middle of the movie, he hasn't shaved. Uh, he's, he's in a robe the whole time. Um, they're at odds with each other. Their friends think they're weird. Uh, and that's more what it's like. Uh, some people, if it's not a, a, a you know, a really uh, crazy haunting, they may be kind of just okay with that. I know people who are like, yeah, it's haunted, but not that big a deal. To me, <laughs> uh, if it was as active as some of these places, uh, you know, like the stone lion that we just talked about or whatever, then maybe, uh, uh, you know, I could live with it, but I, I like to visit it, not live with it. Uh, questions now. Oh, <laughs> um, wow. I don't think so. Uh, someone asked if uh, she was the one that made the pie shells on the embalming table. I don't think so. I think that may have. Hmm. Um, Steve, is your house haunted? No, uh, no. I mean, I don't think so. But then again, we don't know their interpretation of time and space. Uh, for instance, um, what may be a long time here may be not much to them. Or maybe what is a lot, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, we just don't know what it is. So could it be um, that I just haven't had the experience yet? Maybe, but I do have a lot of things in here that, uh, you know, people would think are haunted that I think are possibly haunted. Um, I, actually, one, I, I wouldn't think that any, this is a little morbid, but, you know, I wouldn't think that anything like, a, a, I, I don't think that bones are, are haunted. I don't think a skeleton, nobody would be that attached to their bones, I don't think. If you believe in eternity and all of that sort of thing, that we're energy continuous and, and you know, coming from this uh, 80 year here, it wouldn't mean that that much to you, I don't think. But um, when I acquired this, this is a, I'm sorry, I probably shouldn't, but um, this here, right? Uh, I acquired this as a, a, a skull here, and I, I do keep it on the desk here next to me. But in any case, I don't know how to explain it, but I did hear what sounded like somebody running, excuse me, around the first floor of my house here for a couple nights when I would be upstairs just after acquiring that. And I didn't, I, I, I do remember I, I called a uh, tango uh, one day or I told him and I was like, you know, uh, it could be nothing, but uh, I, I did hear this a few times. And, but that's what makes me question that maybe it wasn't, anything related to that because i feel like if you have a paranormal experience you know you have a, a paranormal experience your body sort of tells you you react to it you go through a lot of emotions you don't just go oh man you know you go you get uh, very excited and, and you know i stayed upstairs going, oh, is it really something but maybe uh it is um <laughs> sorry blur Fleur, Fleur just missed you so much. And now I have I'm to so to sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> when Fleur came on, I watched like the faces here of the front row go like. Oh, God. <laughs> no, I feel so terrible. Um, I, I, just, I like, locked her up. But then, you know, it's my my, my life. Um, Steve, we have a couple questions in the Q&A box, too. Um, one sure. of them was, uh, do you have a preference of what kind? So Patty asks, do you have a preference of what kind of place you like to investigate 
a big asylum or prison or a small family home? Is there something that is you find more rewarding or more preferable? Um, well, we, um, you know, I started investigating in, in sort of because I started quite young, 15 or 16, even though I would never encourage this, obviously, but I would just, okay, my house isn't haunted, go a little further out. That's not a place that's going to be, keep going. And, and I'd find myself in, you know, graveyards or abandoned buildings or that, that, that sort of thing. So to me, I, I have a, a love and respect of like large asylums. They're just so fun and you go through them and it's uh, quite amazing and, and really beautiful and can be very scary, which is a lot of the fun. Um, but the ones that mean the most that I, that Jason, that all of my closest colleagues, Amy, Adam, everybody, uh, Tango, you know, uh, share it. We love uh doing the, the private that's where you actually have the opportunity to help people uh, and you help them by of course uh figuring things out for them whether you're disproving things figuring out the history or uh whether you're really validating their experiences which happens a lot of the times and then they get a little more scared and then you have to help them and counsel them and give them aftercare that sort of thing but when we go we always do try to help people and i think we all do uh at the end of the day so i'd say for me and, and for most of my closest colleagues it would be the, the private residences but uh when you're running around an abandoned asylum or or a hospital or even an old any like it's just so beautiful and awesome and you just look around like it's two in the morning i'm on this uh, it's pretty cool but i have to remind myself there have been no long-term studies uh, yet about what the effects of being in these places at all hours of the night are. What am I breathing? What am I doing? Uh, but yeah, I'd say for me, that's that's pretty awesome. awesome. Yeah. That, and actually, um, uh, you, we have a lot of questions in the Q&A box of also about like your history too. Uh, Nikki asks, I would love to hear about your first experience or which experience made you decide to do this professionally? Um, you know, my first experience wasn't even my experience. Uh, and strangely, I didn't even know it was an experience until many years later. Um, but I was playing with a friend uh, on her floor. Uh, and uh, I remember it being a living room. And we we're playing with the uh, light bright. It's just these little pegs. They still sell them today. You put them in these light boards. And uh, you make pictures, you know, and all of a sudden I started uh, hearing like this weird, like pinging sound or whatever, whatever. And then my friend, her name is Jamie, uh, started crying. I was like, that's weird. What's, you know, and then her mom came over and I remember her mom's exact words. She said to her, she said, don't worry, it'll, it'll be over soon. You know, let, let's put you to bed or whatever. I was like, that's weird too. And then she said, uh, you know, you should call your parents and have them come pick you up. Jamie's going to go to bed now. So I was like, okay, that's that's weird. But I didn't think much of it. And it wasn't until I was about 17 and really into these things and, and or these things, meaning the paranormal and, and all things you can't, you know, that you can't explain. Uh, and, and we reconnected. And she said, don't you remember what was happening when I was younger? She's like, we lived in a haunted house. And and all those memories came back to me. And I was like, the light bright. Holy, you know, your mom. And she's like, yeah. She's like, I think. And so I realized later in life that that was probably my first, you know, experience. But then I think, is it really a haunted house or was static somehow affecting these little plastic pegs? I would say no, because I had a light bright. It never happened in my house. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, it, it was terrifying uh, to me and to her. Uh, not to to me at the time, but looking back, it's like, wow, can you imagine, you know, being a kid and living through that in your own house? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, we'll take a couple of questions too from the front row here. Uh, let's see, Melissa. Hi, right, let's see here. I'll hit the oh. un button. Hello, Melissa. Hi. Wow, I can see you. Oh. <laughs> Is there anything... What, wait, what is the one thing you can't go to a location without? Mm. 
Good question. Great, uh, great question. Uh, one thing I can't go to, I mean, there's the uh, obvious but kind of silly answer of a flashlight. You know, we do a lot in, in the dark and you do need to see. Um, but I would say for me, I I feel lost without uh, an EMF gauge uh, and equally so, maybe even more so without a way to document uh, the experience, you know. Um, so I, I would reverse that video camera and then uh, EMF gauge. Because the video camera, what I love about a, a video camera, whether it be uh, full spectrum, thermal, uh, well, not thermal, uh, that that's a, a different device all of its own, but whether it be full spectrum or infrared, that is uh, a way to document the experience. If you have infrared, you can now see things in the infrared spectrum that you can't see with your, your eyes. So you can now collect a lot more evidence, uh, different kinds of evidence in different spectrums. And you're also recording audio, so you can possibly catch some EVPs or disembodied sounds. And there is a little distinguishing fact there in EVP, electronic voice phenomena. You don't hear it with your ears at all. It's just captured electronically. Uh, it fits in the atmosphere organically, and it's just voice phenomena that you happen to catch electronically, you know, but it's not uh, another semantic uh, term there. But that's a good question. Uh, a lot of people... You know that they um, need a, a crystal, you know, or a cross, or you know, something uh, that they need to have with them. And um, what's that? I, I think is awesome too. Um, but I, I think it's important that it is a part of your arsenal, not just your, you know. Uh, but don't do it. Uh, because I mean, you know, whatever you like, go in with and, and yeah. Yeah, blaze your, blaze your own path. Uh, Renee, hello. Did you have a question for Steve? Yes. Um, I actually, I read the book and I enjoyed it quite a bit. But the thing that I mm -hmm. found really interesting is that there was still a little bit of an air of skepticism with you in some of the some of the things that you said and some of your explanations. And I wonder, do you still have that little bit of skepticism there? And what what is that about? That's a good, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, a good question. Uh, skepticism always, uh, honestly, um, because misinterpreting the experience or, um, you know, just thinking it's something when it may not, really doesn't do anybody any good it doesn't help the investigation uh it doesn't help the client uh, it just exaggerates things and, and makes things it just doesn't make any sense to do that so looking at things skeptically um helps you sort of rule out things and, and maybe not misinterpret things and uh, i think any skepticism in in the book comes you know where I, I pointed at skeptics, uh, you know, because uh, in, in the opening, you know, I say uh, uh, we haven't got anything in terms of evidence yet that appeals to the skeptics. Nothing that there is nobody across the, the you know, saying yes, yes, uh, you will still find people that say absolutely not. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm talking to them, uh, but saying, because then I, I say after that, you know, but I do believe I've experience things that are of uh, this other world and that my colleagues have as well and of course everybody um but I, I think that's an important mindset to have and uh, i learned a lot of that from uh you know the early days with with jay quite honestly and and, and grant and and uh jay would a lot of times push us to uh really you know go with it the next level like really uh, you should raise a, a little more of an eyebrow to that um, and and I've always kept that with me, uh, pushing. Uh, I just think it's important. Skeptics, though, you know, they seem to have an agenda where they don't believe and they don't want other people to believe. Uh, and I think that's a, a disservice to to uh, to themselves. Honestly, you should be open to things. And, and I think it's okay that if somebody thinks that they had an experience and then they learn after that maybe it wasn't uh, to learn and, and, and sway with it. Um, 
but yeah, I, I've had many, many things happen that I, I can't explain. Uh, I've seen uh, figures that are human in, in shape. Uh, I've seen all kinds of stuff, but uh, I will say I've never seen that quintessential when someone says, have you ever seen a ghost? Uh, and I, I take that as uh, what people interpret as a ghost that, you know, visage of a person that's right in front of you and is either solid or transparent and then disappears. Uh, I've never seen that, um, but I have seen that the seen things that I cannot explain. And, and then I do think are paranormal and possibly ghosts. Great question. I mean, I, I that that line that you tread of open to things that are unexplainable and willing to sort of poke holes is sort of the that kind of perfect balance, right? Mm -hmm. You have, to have a critical eye, but you have to be open to seeing what happens, right? Yeah, and you know, I did get into science quite a bit, um, uh, and uh, it, it. I thought in the beginning, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a bit. I thought maybe it would dispel a lot of my beliefs in the paranormal or put me more into, you know, I really started getting into particle physics and, and studying how, you know, if things can happen in the physical environment here, how can it obey the laws of science and really make sense? And I thought that would stop me from believing in a lot of the experiences I had, but it actually made me believe more. Now I can understand how things can move in our environment and make sense in science where maybe if I didn't know, I would go, well, science would say no to this in my brain. Uh, so I think that's important too, you know, understanding how things can really interact with the physical world so that you don't misinterpret experiences. Yeah, absolutely. Aaron, you have a question for Steve. I do. Aaron, hi. hi. I know you. A little bit. Um, so in the house in between two, you used a ion generator where you put ions into the air and you like Dustin and them all had this really crazy experience. And then you guys with the ground penetrating radar also had a really crazy experience. But I also noticed that you used it on some of the episodes too. So yeah. can you talk a little bit more about that? Because the science behind that is very interesting to me. Uh, yeah, um, of course. Thank you. And uh, do not tell the story. Oh, yes. Uh, um, she uh, nursed me back to health once. She's a very nice young lady. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, it, we did. We used, uh, when, I, when we did, we, we did a documentary, House in Between, House in Between, uh, part two, me and, uh, uh, my buddy who's, who's the director of photography on Ghost Hunters and, and uh, does a bunch of uh, Kendall and, and his wife Vera, uh, we made these documentaries and uh, I wanted and, and they as well to, to incorporate science into it and calling physicists they wouldn't hang out no, sorry, ghosts, what, no, eh, no. Um, but I did find a few that, that were willing to uh, talk and, and talk on camera without you know ruining their reputation and um it was awesome dr chi lin dai i learned a lot from him uh and uh dr michael dan and very very and a few but i tried to get a, and i think this is talking to, to your question uh, we tried to get geophysicists involved to see what could be happening in the land and uh we kept getting uh the same thing. Uh, I tried for maybe a year and a half, two years, uh, to try to get a geophysicist, and and it was they would talk to me on the phone, but never uh, on camera. As soon as I said okay, you know, it would be a sorry, I'll lose my funding. Sorry, this and that. I don't know what to do. Okay, uh, but we did find uh, uh, Carolyn uh, who agreed to come to the house graciously, and and she put electrodes throughout the entire ground to see how energy could go through and, and really and she didn't believe in, in ghosts uh, at all you know she it came uh, just to help alice the homeowner uh, and to say hey i'm a scientist who is willing to do some some work here uh in the sake of just helping alleviate this this nice nice lady's uh, fears and i thought that was super awesome 
because she's a busy, busy, and she rearranged everything. And, and she was quite honestly a little afraid that the scientific community would, uh, you know, say, "Hey, this woman uh, is into some things that we're not supporting." Um, but what happened is, is she actually had an experience that really jarred her because she didn't think she would ever have an experience. Uh, she saw a figure walking uh, in the backyard uh, and she went over there. He wasn't there. She didn't know where he came from, where he went. It it all went through her head. This matches all the stories and all this and that. Uh, and it really put her into a different place. And, and by the end, she was like, and, and to her, uh, you know, to her uh, credit, uh, there was a little bit of negotiating there if we could even put some of that in there because she did not, uh, you know, she was afraid that she would now be, I don't want to use the word laughed at, but at least not taken as seriously in the scientific community as she would be otherwise. Um, But, uh, you know, what's awesome is she still goes to the house on her own and still does research and, and visits Alice. Uh, and that's super cool. And ground penetrating radar, that's something that we've always used on, on Ghost Hunters and on uh, Ghost Nation as well. And um, it, 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 sometimes it's hard to, because they're really busy and, and they're like, look for what, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we're, we're doing real work. They're trying to look for other things, cisterns or whatnot. But uh, you, have, you if you can find one that, you know, sort of specializes in looking for graves and burials, they're a little more likely to come out and give you a hand, but uh, it, it's always been you know, a tool that we've used. And, and it, what it does is, is really helps you fact check the history because a lot of the history is what these people, and when I say these people, I mean, of course, all of the people are having these experiences, especially the owners of these places. Um, they will attribute a lot of it to the, the, the history. So if they think that I'm making this up just for the sake of the story, but and they think somebody fell into a well and died there, and, and uh, now the, the, the backyard's haunted, and they'll never go in their backyard or whatever. And we do the ground penetrating radar, and it's like it's solid ground all the way back there, and nothing was ever there. It really helps them feel much better. Um, and then you can fix the history too. So it's pretty awesome and important. And in the house in between too, uh, we did see that it did uh, back up that uh, you know there was. Uh, a gentleman uh, that did have a structure back there and possibly lived in, on the back land there. And, and that could be where the structure of, uh, I don't want to give away too much, but possibly who's haunting the land. Uh, but uh, I won't, uh, yeah, thank you. That's all. But anytime you can get things to help back up your claims and help the uh, client uh, is what you need to do. And ground penetrating radar, it's not always easy. It's not always cheap, but you're at, uh, you know, the servitude of those you are trying to help. That's, uh, it, it, this is such an electrifying topic and there's, I feel like so much to learn about it. So many, the, the technology of it, the process of it, the research of it. Um, I feel like there's, we're just sort of scratching the surface with you now. Um, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap shortly and move on to our meet and greets. But before we do that, uh, I'll just go through a quick quick lightning round of some Q and A questions in the box, uh, and then we'll reveal that surprise that surprise oh. that you have for everybody uh, watching today. So um, I'm gonna go through these Q and A and just like a lightning round, and we'll see if we can get to as many as possible before we have to wrap here. Um, uh, Laura asks, Have you ever walked into an investigation and walked back out because you found out that they were faking everything? Has that ever happened to you? Yes, many, many times. Um, a few even on the show. Uh, Queen Mary, Moss Beach Distillery. Uh, we don't know necessarily who, what, why. Oh, well, why? Because they're, you know, but uh, but we usually go back in, you know, because even if they are, it doesn't mean that nothing is happening there, especially if there is history to sort of support it. But you do get really, really angry. Uh, we had a, a place once, uh, I won't mention it because uh, it, uh, but they're like, it's so good to have you guys. Uh, we uh, never even heard. This is so cool. Um, maybe it's hot. Hope so. All this. And they went through the whole thing. And they told us they didn't even know anything about the paranormal. They weren't into it. They didn't know us. And anybody that knows any of the shows that I've been on, especially with, you know, uh, Ghost Hunters, of course, uh, uh, 
I go through, you know, you need to know what people are. And I tell them, I'm like, Hey, what, you know, and I remember opening this uh, drawer desk drawer and it was like, ghost hunters, ghost hunters, ghost hunters, ghost hunters, ghost hunters. What? And then there was a notebook that said, uh, get taps to come here and raise tour traffic. <laughs> like what? Yeah. You, you bums. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, and it's usually, uh, you know, in the spirit of the investigation that we we rally back up and say, hey, yeah, let, let's really get here and, and and do it. But yeah, that that has happened. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll take. I'm just going to grab one or two more, and then we'll we'll get to the surprise and move on to meet and greets. But um, uh, Karen loved the book. She's asking. It just the book just came out. Karen, she's asking, will there be another one coming out? <laughs> Oh, well, I like the way you think, Karen. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, I think, uh, of course, someday, yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, this one uh, was just released two months ago, not even two months ago, a month and a half. Um, Great yeah, and uh, thank you. Uh, if you like it, let me know. Uh, thank yeah, you. we're going to put the link here as well so people can go grab it. Um, you can get it on Amazon and Simon & Schuster has a bunch of links as well. Uh, or as Steve and I probably prefer, a local bookstore would be uh, amazing too. Yes. I mean, always support uh, local business if you can, but uh, they've all been very gracious to me and us. So, uh, yes. Awesome. Uh, the last question, I'll add, just lightning around you and then we'll get on the surprise. Um, Mindy asks, what is one top location you think all investigators or investigators to be should go visit? Um, I, I mean, I definitely say, um, for me, Waverly Hills, Louisville, Kentucky, mm. uh, seems to be very, very, very active. Um, just about every time I've been there, there's been activity. And even if there isn't, it's just absolutely gorgeous, uh, beautiful to look at, beautiful to be in, and just picture what it was happening when it was a, a working building there. Um I would say go there, go with some friends, maybe take five or six people. Uh, it'll cut the cost way, way, way down. It'll be like just a fun time and you can run around that whole place by yourself. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. So, Steve. Thank you. Want, well, want to tell everybody what's happening here? What You got a little surprise. Um, <laughs> Make-A-Wish uh, Foundation, everybody. Very, very, very sweet. Um, who was here, as you know, um, a lot of the this these tickets do benefit uh, that charity, and um, that's a charity that uh, you know Jay and I and a lot of the people in our world have uh, done a lot of uh, work with, and uh, it's a, a beautiful thing when you see it in action, and um, you know Charlie and the gang here are very very kind to set that up, and then also. Uh, there is a a t-shirt uh, and a, a sweatshirt here that uh, they've set up at uh, stands that uh, will also benefit Make-A-Wish Foundation. Every uh, one sold uh, will go uh, proceeds, uh, some of the proceeds from that will go straight to uh, that charity. And uh, that charity is actually one of the ones that uh, they have such a, a great track record in terms of where the funds uh, are actually being used. And when it comes to donating, I know that's always a, a question, uh, but they have a, a great uh, a track record. And uh, they're one of the companies that do rely heavily on on volunteers. Uh, and that is, uh, you know, quite important, too, in, in that charity world. And uh, so thank you. Uh, but that will be available and every single one sold, uh, you know, for uh, uh, both of these uh, companies to say, hey, let's do something nice here. Uh, people want T-shirts like this. People want, uh, let's find a way to also uh, give uh, to charities, I, I think is really one of the, one of the coolest uh, things that have uh, come around in a long time. Uh, and this one here, uh, <laughs> right. I think we all do, still plays with dolls, right? Still got it. And so that will be available this week uh, on shopstands.com. Uh, this and one here is one of my dolls. Oh, yeah, that's right. I've seen this doll. 
Oh, oh no, he's getting it. I'm gonna go. I gotta go. No. She's supposedly haunted, but like I said, nothing's ever happened in my house. That I, looks pretty haunted to me, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> pretty haunted to me. Um, oh my god. Uh, yeah. So we'll be sending you all a code also to get a discount on the shirt for hanging out with us today and tell everybody you know uh, fundraising for Wake Make a Wish, who's been doing incredible work for thirty plus years, forty years. Um, they are they are a cut above the rest, and and we we appreciate them, and we appreciate you, Steve, for hanging out today and answering questions, uh, coming on this momentous event. 